Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Quick Tips, again focusing here on Xamarin. Uh, we've done a Hello World video, we've done just kind of an intro overall, uh, this is what Xamarin is video. Uh, in the previous video with Hello World, we did use Xamarin Forms, which again allows us to share our UI code. And now I want to just do a little bit more with Xamarin Forms, just to kind of explore the different controls that are out there. And there's a ton of them. So I'm going to do basically just build kind of a, a sign-up page. Uh, and this sign-up page will have some sliders, some entry, uh, some labels, buttons, those kind of things that are pretty common, some of those controls that you'll probably see pretty often uh, when using Xamarin Forms. So first off, uh, let me uh, switch over and record the screen because I want to show you just the documentation on what kind of form or controls are out there, and then we'll go ahead and start to build something. So let's go ahead and switch over uh, to the to the screen. All right, so we're here, uh, basically back at the the Xamarin Forms homepage uh, that we kind of took a look at in our first video. Scroll up, we can see everything we saw before. Uh, so again, I want to take a look at some of the different controls out of the box that we have. Uh, so first off, before we get to controls, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the layouts. And the layouts are basically the containers for the controls of your page. So a stack layout, just basically you stack things either horizontally or vertically. That's what we're going to use for now. Uh, there's absolute layout where you kind of do hard-coded positions, not really as recommended, especially if you're going across different devices of different screen sizes and stuff like that. The relative layout, which is kind of cool because it, it al allows you to basically uh, set things relative to each other. So if I have my title and I want to have a text go right underneath that, I can say, you know, put below the title and center it with the title or put it to the right of the title if it's an icon or something like that. Uh, grid layout is pretty straightforward. It's a grid, uh, so if you think about it, a typical grid system, you can have rows and columns and put certain things in certain rows or columns and span different amounts of rows and columns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then we've got a couple more. Uh, scroll view here. If you have something you want to scroll through, that's pretty useful. Um, if you have like a long piece of text, you can scroll through. And then constant view and frame, uh, which we won't really talk about today. Uh, is, so with those, those are all the containers, and inside of those containers is where you put your different controls. So one of the ones that, or a couple of the ones we've already seen, are the label here, and then the button, and I think that's all we've seen. Uh, and we're going to take a look at a uh, picker here, uh, a stepper, a entry, where's the entry? Entry's here, so that's taking input from the user. We'll use another button, we'll use a switch cell, I think... That's most of them. Uh, and a couple of the other ones, just to mention them really quickly, a box view, just kind of do a box with a certain color. Um, let's see, web view, you can wrap like a website inside of a, a view, a control inside of your application. They've got maps on here. Uh, ooh, a slider, so that one's uh, pretty easy to use, slider. Images, we're actually gonna have a separate video for using images. Um, activity indicator, something that pops up to say, uh, you know, something's going on. Uh, list view, we'll have a separate video for list view and a couple of others. Uh, but I, and the way that I was going to kind of put some of these together is to do a simple like sign up page. That's what it's basically going to be the, the general idea. So let's pop back over to Visual Studio. Uh, no, we're okay with that. And I've got uh, from our app CS again, just uh, set main page to a new instance of home, what we did in our last video. And then on home, we've got our stack layout. And our stack layout, we're waiting to put children in. So we've got a title here that says forms controls. And then we're going to add some stuff. And one thing I didn't talk about last video is this line of code here. So one thing to know with iOS is that uh, there's the, the status bar at the top of an iOS application. And iOS doesn't automatically kind of push your app down below it. So you have to kind of take that into account and push down your content uh, specifically for iOS. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing the padding for uh, our page, our content page. And we're setting it to a thickness. And uh, this middle parameter, which is kind of long, uh, is going to be our top parameter for thickness. So that's the one that we want to change. And we only want to change it for iOS. So we're using device.onplatform. And then in order, you've got iOS 
Android and Windows Phone. So this is saying only give a 20 pixel buffer padding at the top when you're on iOS and that'll push everything down below that status bar. Something you'll probably use in, in almost everything that you do. Uh, so it's good to be familiar with that. But so from here, I'm going to go in and um, just kind of add some of those forms controls. So if we think about a sign-up process, we probably want a uh, an email address or something like that. So I'm going to do a stack layout, and this will be email stack, new stack layout. All right, and I want this orientation to be horizontal. Oh, uh, orientation stack orientation horizontal and um, I'll do a comma and then I'll say it's children are and then come back to that so basically I want to have a label to the left so I just like to copy and paste these things down so this will be uh, email label and then we'll say email and my horizontal options, I want to be just start. And vertical options, uh, it really doesn't matter because this is just going to be big enough to hold this. Uh, and then I'll make this uh, medium size. So, and then to the right of that label, I want to have an entry. So, entry, uh, an email entry, new entry. Um, and these horizontal options are going to be layout options, start, and expand. So this is going to start uh, just after this email label and then go on and kind of push out, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the rest of that row. Uh, so we want the email stack, the children, to include email label and then email entry. And again, since it's horizontal, those things will be put side by side horizontal. Uh, and just to kind of check here, let's go ahead and set uh, Android as a startup project and run that really quickly just to see. Oh, and one thing, I continue to forget this. Need to add the stuff to our main stack. So title and then email stack. And uh, I'll probably have to wait a second for that to stop running. So it's popping up, and I think we're going to have to rerun this to get some of those newest updates here. Yeah, I didn't add anything yet. So let me uh, rerun that one. Have that pop up. Oh, and it looks like those are a little bit off too. Uh, so let me see, what did that one do? So forms controls, and it looks like I put email at the bottom here. So with the title, uh, yeah, let's not start and expand. Let's just do start to put it at the top. Um, and then next, and I'm going to do a large, um, well, I'll keep that at medium. Uh, the email entry and email label. All right, so let's try that again. And in a second, I'm going to switch back over to the Windows Phone emulator. It works a little quicker. Uh, there it is. So there's our entry, and I could type in there. And this is very small. So uh, I'm going to switch back over to our Windows Phone one, close that one, and switch back over to Windows Phone. And I'll pause this for a second while that loads up. All right, so we've got this up, and it looks a little weird. So I'm going to put some padding in here to move the email away a little bit and then kind of center these two uh, vertically. So let's go down to that padding that we created, and I think this first one will be left. So let's do 10 there, and then let's do 10 everywhere else. So we've got 10 on either side. Dun, dun, dun. So we've got a little padding, um, and then we want to center vertically the email label and entry so vertical options layout options dot center and we'll copy that one down for here 
And then I'm going to change uh, this entry to go fill. Um, and that should fill the remaining space in And actually, I'm going to have this email entry uh, go fill and expand. And that should push it all the way to the right. So let's run that and see it. Just make sure we're on the, on the right page. Let it load. Okay, so there's in our input. You can see I can type in here, all that kind of stuff. And I could even use my keyboard, which is really nice. Uh, so then I could do the same thing maybe for password. So, uh, and actually I could copy all of this since it's gonna look the exact same. And then we'll change this to password label. And to uh, skip the boring stuff, I'll pause and go ahead and make those changes. All right, and a little bit of magic. And now we've got our password entry, our password stack, um, and our password label. And all that is going into uh, the password, uh, actually this would be password stack going into that main stack. Hopefully all that made sense. Just doing the same thing, just kind of uh, customizing a little bit. And then one additional thing, since this is a password, I want to not be able to see uh, what people are typing in. So I can say is password equals true. And now if we run, we should see that same thing. So we'll have email and then password. And then when we type in password, we should see that we get a password look and feel. And I could make, uh, I could push these to be the same. We won't worry about that for now. We'll just kind of leave them. Uh, but cool. So we've got those. We've got those two. And now the next thing we want to add is, let's say, a picker. So we want to add a picker that uh, we can choose our, uh, let's say, age by. Or actually, let's choose our favorite color. Let's do favorite color. So I want to do a picker and I'll call it color picker equals new picker. Go ahead and close that one out. And now this picker, I want to be uh, horizontally, horizontally centered. So horizontal options, layout options. And again, you get kind of repetitive with this. Uh, I want it to be centered. Um, and actually maybe, well, yeah, we'll just do, we'll just use center. And does this have a title? Yeah, title, we'll call it uh, favorite color. And then we need to go ahead and add the items for the person to choose from. So I'm gonna do a string array uh, called colors. And I'll skip some of this with magic and just paste this in. So I've got a new string with red, yellow, blue, and green. So I can iterate through each of, those, each of these and go ahead and copy them into our picker. So I'll do a for each and for each uh, string S in colors. Then I want to add that string to the items of our color picker. So color picker dot items dot add. And we want to add S, that string. All right, so let's run. Oh, we need to add that to our main stack. So we'll add color picker. And hopefully we're getting a feel for, you know, just a couple of the different kinds of controls that we have access to. Oh, we, we might need to make that. Uh, expand a little more. So let's do a, for the color pickle picker, let's do a fill and expand also, make that go all the way across. And I'm kind of making these up as I go. So let's see, okay, so there's our picker and we can choose uh, red, yellow, green, blue. And now it shows what color we pick. And we could put a label on top of that that says choose your favorite color. Um, and again, we could add a label on top of it to, to say what we're picking from, but we've got our color picker. Uh, and then maybe we want to, um, we could do a bunch of things, right? We could, we could have a slider for age. We could have uh, a stepper, like a, an incrementer for age or something like that. We could have a lot of different things. Uh, but this is just a really quick intro to see how you can work with some of these Xamarin form controls. And then inside of the Xamarin.Forms documentation, you can go in and just pick 
any of those controls and kind of see what different things you can change. They've got a sample here, so this shows how to get uh, keep some colors and then add the colors to the picker. They're using a box view here, using a lot of different things. In the uh, picker, once you change, you could change the color of a box to something else. Some kind of cool stuff. So again, this is kind of a quick intro to show you some of the different forms controls that you can use. And hopefully that will give you a start to getting into Xamarin Forms and sharing that UI to save you some time in the future and save you some code that you don't have to write. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Quick Tips and hopefully to see you uh, back for more in the future.